going to the adventure on Pumlet on W four C Y Radio. Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Pipe Man. This is the Pipe Man here on the Adventures of Pipe Man W4CY Radio here at Rocklahoma with Fire Strike. How are you? Fire Strike, but you know what? Oh, we'll fuck take me. Fire Strike. Let me tell you something. I want to make a t shirt up that's got our fucking name spelled differently, said differently, and it would take up both sides of the t shirt. So don't feel bad, brother. Listen, <laughs> you know why I do feel bad, though? Because, first of all, I know the proper spelling and I know what happened up there at the board. Okay. But I usually will, like, Ask somebody how their band name said, so I don't butcher their name. Okay, <laughs> that's okay. And, and I just assumed, well, which it, you know what assumed does. Yeah, ass out of you, but not me. Okay, just you. That's Sorry. right. That's it's okay, bro. I You're love You're not it. alone. I'm just trying to let you know it's okay. We're but I, to, we just made a joke about it. I love that you called me out on it. Well, you're damn right. <laughs> I mean, right out of the gate. I love it. I love it. You know, it's also funny. They it, missed it. What'd you call us? Fire strike. Fire strike. Right out of the gate. And I, I, but I had the was, spelling right, just not the pronunciation. That's how it was printed in the media list. Yeah, we got fire truck. <laughs> how about first trike? First trike. Like my first trike ever. Wow. Yep. yep. One of my personal favorites on the award box, first yerky. Yeah. Whoa. First year. You guys go first to the White Arcade. Kennedy and after the first White Arcade. Birthday, 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 birthday. First year. Yeah. We're like Swedish metal. That's awesome. There you go. You're a Swedish metal band. There you go. We'll, we'll rename you now. <laughs> In our dreams. So here's what's even funnier is I was just having an interview before where we were talking about San Antonio Slayer and huh. Slayer Slayer because wow. I went to Slayer Slayer's first gig Ever. Okay. okay, so I'm old school thrash metalhead. LA Slayer, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. So for an LA person that's the only Slayer. But now yes. there's you you take over the Tulsa Slayer. Well, you know what? That was good lord. You're going way back, my friend. <laughs> We're going way back to the your early way early eighties, even late seventies. That was our first band named Slayer. Uh-huh. And we were basically a cover band that were on the road doing the same tour circuit with Pantera. Right. And we were doing great. Brian and I were in Slayer, and we were called Tulsa Slayer. And then we knew right away about the other great Slayer that became, you know, yeah. metal monsters. Which they were a cover band originally, too. I think every band was. So. Yeah, yeah, you kind of have to be, right? We were with a, 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 a out, couple outfits, agents, like American bands, Hatchet Talent and a bunch of other ones. But we knew it's time to change the name. So we did, and we changed it to First Strike to be. Then we found out there was another band called First Strikes. So we said, let's make this done. And we combined it, spelt it weird, and we've been First Strike since 1983. Yeah. Nice. Since 83 on. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. Well, you know, what's funny about that is nowadays I feel bad for bands that have to come up with a band name because they have to do what, exactly what you did. Every band name is taken, so they're, like, using symbols, weird spellings, yep. you know, stuff like that. So you started that. It's your fault. Well, hey, we started something, you know. <laughs> we started a lot of shit, and if we started that, that's cool, man, you know. But the opposite side, everybody says Third Reich with no problem. On the opposite side, everybody says Third Reich with no problem. So we're First Reich. should be smooth, but no. Yeah. Well, well, I... I'm a Jew, so I wouldn't call you Third Reich. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And, and see, we never wanted anybody to think that, you know, that we were associated with anything like that. But we just thought, you know, that's pretty rock and roll, First Reich, you know. And It does sound kind of. 
metal. We didn't want it to. We didn't want it to sound like anybody else, and but we wanted to be done with it once and for all, where nobody else could say that's our name too. But we've had that name since '83. And L.A. Slayer should have really changed their name to Fucking Slayer because that's all anybody says anyway. Right. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and they deserved with, to do whatever they want to do with their name, you know. Right. But we caught a little shit with that name, you know, from the guys from San Antonio. And we understand because they had a Slayer band, too, you know. And that's when we said, okay, we don't want to shit. We just want to rock, man. Let's, that's when we decided to change the name. So so that's the, the, the history of the name. It's better. I like it better. I can, I can fuck it up. You can call me out on fucking it up, and it starts the whole interview. Yeah, I swear to God. I mean, but I just, I just, it's like you planned that. I was like, well played, man. Right. Uh, did you there plan, there you, you go. Know, I don't even want to know. I mean, even if you did plan it. Well and, done. And I probably wouldn't tell you. <laughs> right on. So let's tell the listeners a little bit about you guys besides... All the name shit, because I never talk about names, but I just thought it was funny that I never even knew there was a San Antonio Slayer till today. Oh, yeah. And then it's like, okay, there's a San Antonio, there's a Tulsa Slayer. It's like... There was a Tulsa Slayer. Yeah, you know, it's like, what? I didn't even know. I just thought there was one Slayer. And now we have you guys who fucking are badass and, you know, been around forever. And now you're here at Rocklahoma kicking ass here. So let's talk about it. Yeah, man. I mean, let's introduce ourselves. I mean, first of all, we're First Reich. It's spelled F-I-R-S-T-R-Y-K-E. And this is our 10th appearance here. My wow. name is Rick Adams. I'm the lead singer, and I'm going to pass the mic around to the rest of these guys in the band. I'm Steve Pogue. I play guitar all the time. I'm Brian Wallace. I play bass and a little guitar and a little singing, and that's about it, yeah. Songwriter. Uh, Mike DiPetrillo, I play drums, and make a crap load of noise back there. And my hair twin. There it is. <laughs> blues, blue, blue blues the shit, man. So that's pretty cool you guys have been playing here for 10 years because it was funny you walked up during the other interview and they played here like for seven years. Like that's pretty cool about this festival that bands like play year after year. That says a lot because the crowd must love you guys if you're going to come back. They, you know, festival promoters not going to bring back a band that sucks or that the crowd doesn't like. Yeah, thank you for that. And I was watching you interview Eric, Jake from Wild Street, and uh, and I was like, man, we go way back, you know. And I couldn't wait to talk to him and get a picture with him because I'm like, boy, we've been doing this shit a long time, you know, and. And uh, it's good to see you. And he said, man, good to see you, too. We, I think our first one, and he reminded me of it, was 2009. Wow. Yeah. You're yeah. like the Rocklahoma house band. I like that. That's pretty badass. Right? That's a good, that's a good. We'll take that. But yeah. to be honest with you, I think we're the only ones that can claim 10 out of 15 as an official Rocklahoma band. They used to do the campground stages, and I'm sure a lot of those cats can say they played a bunch too. But as far as being on one of those three main stages, we're it. I mean, for ten times, so we're pretty, you know, proud of that. And we're they're not going to like this, but campground stages don't count. I I agree, but you know, <laughs> I don't want to say nothing. We had some fun those couple of years though on the one that was back behind the main stage. Yes, you know, uh, to be honest with you, if you did the math, we. Back in the old days of, of Rocklahoma, we played two and three times oh, that's during a cool. weekend. So we could say maybe, I don't know, maybe 13 or 14 oh, times. Because yeah. we, we played three shows in, in a weekend one year. I think yeah. it was the first year when we were with Retrospect. Wow. Yeah. See, now European festivals still, still do that stuff. Like I just did Hellfest. Megadeth played twice. Yeah. Yeah, man. Airborne played twice. Uh, violence was on Bloodstock, which I was just at Bloodstock too. Where was that? UK. Nice. It's it it's a killer metal festival, like a like a real community festival. Like I did download, and then when I was at download, everybody's like, "You gotta do Bloodstock. You gotta do Bloodstock." I didn't even know what Bloodstock was, but now that I went, oh. that's a badass festival. But I like for me as somebody as press, I like when bands. Like you were talking about, play multiple times because I'm stuck in here. So, like, I love Megadeth. I missed one of their sets. 
so I got to see another. Killing Joke played twice at Hellfest. They played once in a tent stage and once on the main stage. So that was kind of cool, too. Nice, nice. Yeah, we were, back in those days, I mean, we were just glad to be here, you know, and, and kind of resurrected the band. And we went through some changes after the first couple, I think, with the original lineup. And that's when we got these cats with Mike first. We actually did have the original lineup. We did have the original lineup for huh. a couple of Rocklahomas. And, you know, things happen, things change. Um, we decided let's, Brian and I have been together since, the, we're the original guys, still together, pushing 40 See, years. See, that, that's pretty good. Pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> together that long, you know? I mean, even I wonder how you don't kill each other. Yeah. Nah, we, we, we got past that a long yeah, time ago. We, did. we don't, you know. I mean, back in back when we were younger, and back when we were younger, and you know, out running around, and we'd get crazy, and every now and then, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe square off out in the parking lot for maybe a minute. But he did. <laughs> he called me up. <laughs> but then, you know, you get older, man, and. And and you start waking up in the morning. Even if you even if you win the fight, you still hurt. You know. So no like, doubt. You know what, man? Let's just everybody agree together. And we're all stupid when you're young. You know what's interesting about that is, at Hellfest, Corn did a press conference, and all, they kept talking. Something came up from about oh about calling them new metal. Right. And they never fucking liked that label ever. And. They were talking about how they were young and, you know, stupid and blah, blah, blah. And like all the, like what you were just talking about, like nothing really negative, just the conflicts and like getting pissed off because you're being called new metal or whatever, you know, the reason is and you yeah. get older and it's like, it's not worth it. Just getting pissed off to be pissed off and you're 10 foot tall and bulletproof. You know, right. Exactly. That and, exactly. You know, like that now. Yeah. 100%. So what's it like then playing after all these years, you know, because it's like when you're young and full of all that angst. It's fucking blast. Yeah. There is. you go. It's fucking blast. Give I him think the mic. I have more fun now than I did back then. Yeah, it comes right back like, you know, we've all got medical problems, we're all old, you know, and you yeah, right, yeah. And and you know, you're you're sitting out there and the, and, you know, the adrenaline kicks in cuz you're going to play. But you're not scared because we play so many gigs, right? Listen, you're excited, but then you get out there, and I'm not kidding, man. It's like this this 60 year old dude. So I'm 62, and I feel 25 for that 40, 35 minutes. I love it. So check this out. I'm 55, and sometimes when I go do these festivals, I'll bring you know one of my kids. My youngest daughter, she's 26 years old, gonna be 27 like a, a week, and. She comes and like after a half a day of a festival, she's like, I'm done. She goes, Dad, how do you do this every weekend? And it's like, I, I prefer doing it. I hate being home. I love doing it. And like the whole atmosphere, the whole thing. And, and yes, it's long, grueling hours, but, but you're in, that's it. I'm with my family. I have more friends on the road than I do at home. It's like, you, you know how it is. You go home and it's like you get that decompression. It's like coming off of drugs or something. Right on. <laughs> yeah, man, we're the same way. We love the atmosphere. And, and when we did, were asked to play back in, what, February? I was in Vegas getting married. And I Congrats. Like, Are you kidding me? Thanks, bro. And I was like, Are you fucking. What? A, I was like a kid, man, a little kid on Christmas Day. I couldn't wait to tell these guys. I mean, I told them while I was in Vegas, guess what? We're going to play Rocklahoma for our 10th time. They just asked us. Yes. Nice. Went, I, you know, what do you think? And they're like, what do you, what do you think? <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know? Yeah, we didn't even negotiate nothing. We just said, well, we're there. You Not, know? And See, I love that because too many bands nowadays are in it and I don't understand it all for the business. Like, they're like, first of all, there is no business. If you're gonna be in for a business, this is the wrong business to be in, you know? We know that. And you can always tell when you see a band up on stage, whether they're just going through the motions or if they just love what they're doing. I have no tolerance for the going through the motions. If you wanna go through the motions, go work at a bank or something. Let me tell you something. If we were doing this for the business and to make a living, 
we'd be freaking skinny as hell <laughs> and have nothing yeah you know but we of course we're not in it for that we're in it because we love to do it yeah it's our it's our thing man you know it's our thing that's the only way it should be 100 percent. we love it and and been looking forward to this festival for a long time as we always have and uh, you know we played uh, you know a great set out there about what an hour or so ago with a great crowd and we had a ball and the crowd was great we met a lot of them and i can't wait to mingle after you know nice you know, after all this and see i and love hearing that too you know it's like a lot of people don't realize out there that a lot of the bands you know they're fans so after they're done if they don't have to go to another gig they're out in the crowd with you like there's there's some bands like chris from motionless and white i'll sit out in the crowd and watch a show and he won't have his makeup on or anything nobody knows it's him and he's just sitting out there just watching you know not in vip not somewhere special just in general in 2000 was it 18 that ghost played yeah in 2018 i stood right there by the stage with tobias he was standing there he hadn't he just played and i didn't know the singer tobias, tobias. Oh. you know he wears yeah. a bit the mask and stuff yeah. so i'm standing there, i look at this dude he just looks like a dude and then the next day i think it was i was going through pictures and stuff and there was somebody took a picture of him and there's him and, me, and i'm just standing there watching and it said tobias Forrest was watching the show and it was like yeah i had no idea right you know because he didn't have all that crap on exactly and even like there's a different look you guys probably know this Say that again? That's happened a bunch of times to me over the years. Cats come up and end up being in the crowd next to him. Like, hey, dude, what's up? Weren't you just up there? I'm like, yeah. Right? So, that, that. And I also find that even back here, too, like, who I see up on stage, even the people that I'm friends with, I see them back here or out in the crowd. It's a different look, you know? So you don't really know. There's times people will come up to me in a crowd that are artists that I've interviewed, and they'll go, hey, what's up, Pipe Man? And I'll look at him. I'm like, who the fuck was that? <laughs> and it could be like Jacoby Shaddix or something. I'm like, who the fuck was that? <laughs> you know? So and he looks like he looks like your suburbia next door dad. Yeah. Wait. Oh, wait. What the fuck? Like yeah. Yep. Oh, I got a funny... Yeah. I got a funny story about that because I love Slipknot. So I was interviewing Roy Mayorga at one of the festivals. No, he's a badass. Yeah. Oh. And so after after the interview is over, I go and I sit down on the curb backstage. I'm just smoking a cigarette. It wasn't a media town. It was on the tour bus. And I just sat down. This dude sits down next to me. I knew who it was, but I wasn't 100% sure until he opened his mouth. And it was Corey Taylor. Nice. But the whole time I acted like I didn't know who he was. Like, because you know how it is. You're back there. You can't be fanboying out and shit. So, yeah, so he's just talking to me about the weather in Georgia the night before at the show and stuff. And we're talking for like a half an hour, you know. And But it is, it's like, like you're saying, it's a trip. Like, at first I wasn't sure. Like, I kind of thought maybe... But because he's always got that mask on, I, like, really didn't know. And then he starts talking. Like, hey, what's up? You know, like, <laughs> I can't do his voice. But, you know, I was like. He came around oh, yeah. the corner with the hat and glasses on. And we were sitting down before I got to talk to him. And it's like, no, right over there. And it's like, oh. he's like, hey, what's up, dude? And we sat and talked for about a half hour. He was great. I'm a huge fan of Corey. But, yeah, he looks like regular other dude, and you don't recognize him at first. What? That's why I always tell people, cool. too, if I come bring people here to be, like, to help me and stuff, I'm always like, listen, this is their safe haven, and they're just regular fucking people. Don't ask for an autograph. Don't ask for a selfie unless it's for promo purposes. But other than that, just treat them like a normal person because that's what they want here. They have enough of that out there. You go exactly. 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 You go into a, a different mode when it's a, a person that you've seen out in the audience at your show. Yeah. You know, and you you kind of got to be that guy for them. Yeah. You know, we first started doing this, and Brian was like, I was like, you know, it's kind of weird for me, you know, signing autographs when, you know, I really work a day job and stuff. And Brian's like, dude, this weekend you're a rock star. Yeah. And don't 
screw up their vision and, and their their opinion. You know, don't screw up their fantasy. Yeah. You know, so that may be. Yeah, you're right. You know. Hundred percent. This weekend, I'm, I'm a rock star. You know, in my mind, you know, and you got to treat. The well, you are. You're way. playing fucking rock, Oklahoma. Of course, yeah. you're a rock star. Yeah. And well, the deal is, is you 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 got to act that way to a certain extent, not to let the ego get there, but you know, it's really it's really a fine line, you know, because you see other people acting out with the ego. But it's really weird when you stand there and you, you say, oh, hey, that guy's a rock star. And the other side of it is, is that you want to turn the switch off, too. Like me, even as a radio personality, my radio personality in real life, they're two different things. So I laugh sometimes when people that even know me for years, they're like, oh, you've changed. <laughs> I'm like, I'm fucking playing a role. What's wrong with you? you know? Hey, man, I'm fixing to go be a pedestrian and walk around when I get done doing the media stuff today. Exactly. Be I'll be in the mosh pit, man. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the way it is. So. Hey, you know what part of sustains, you know, part of what makes being a part of this better is that we don't put pressure on ourselves because we get to do this don't ever take it for granted and i think not putting pressure like that is what ends up sustaining it yeah you know and we have a fucking blast doing it we're still 14 you know 17 years old when we get on stage dude it's a blast to get as a cool ass picture it's a lot of fun that's a cool ass picture by the way i'd sound like a, a, a husband but Rocklahoma, when you get the, the word you're going to play Rocklahoma, that's the best time to get new equipment. Yeah. Because the, because the old lady's like, oh, well, you got to have that for Rocklahoma. Yeah. Right, I, right, right. I need this. You don't get any argument. I need this for Rocklahoma. Well, I don't want you to look bad up there. Well, I'm going to have to get the more expensive one then, baby. And it's like, bam, got it. And then Love after it. Rocklahoma, it's like, oh, crap. <laughs> well, I don't want that guitar, you know, but it's it's, it's a blast. That's right. Yeah, it's true, though. I mean, it's, it's the funnest thing you're going to do as a musician. And as far as being a local artist, this is the top of the mountain. Yeah. As far as playing gigs, you know, other than to be okay. But, you know, so you tell a person, now yeah, I played Rocklahoma, and they, they look at you like, you know, you're a golden god or something. Right. And then you're like, well, I played it three times, and the band I'm in has played it ten times. What? <laughs> you know? Of course, you never see them in the audience, so you're like, come see us. They never show up. Yeah, right? So, yeah, it's fuck, cool as hell. You guys rock. Why don't you give everybody how they can connect to you, social media-wise, web-wise, buy your merch. That's important because that's the only way we support artists nowadays. And anything else they need to know that we haven't covered yet. Yeah, I mean, First Strike on Facebook is our main page. They can contact us there. And actually, we have stuff for sale, but we're one of those bands that we don't, we're not greedy. We're not like trying to like make a buck off you we just want you to love our music if you want our stuff you can contact us through first strike through facebook we'll get what you want if you want something we'll get it to you in the tulsa area where we live we all live in tulsa oklahoma we have a lot of our stuff at a place called starship records and tapes and they have both our albums there uh cds and actual some stuff on lp albums that they used to make once a, once a long time ago and now they're making again they made a big comeback which is cool because i think it sounds great our stuff sounds great on an album by the way all stuff sounds great on yeah. an album and we have stuff we have a lot of stuff out here at rock home for sale too at the merch tent by the deb roadhouse stage so if you're out here at rock go out there and get some of our stuff and and we'll be hanging around all weekend and we'd love to meet you and uh, greet you and sign whatever you want and have some fun with you you know i love it see that to me is a true rock star right there you know it's (laughs) like i always find going back to what we were saying a lot of the iconic bands they don't even know they're iconic like i've interviewed leonard skinner and they're like they have no clue they're really leonard skinner (laughs) they're just some good old boys having a good time and that's all they were you know and that's the way it should be man that this business sucks otherwise. It's tough. It's like, again, if you're in it to make some money, boy, good luck to you. You know, we're in it because we love it. There you go. That's I the mean, only reason to be in. That's why I love you guys and why the fans should love you too. So thank you for playing at Rocklahoma ten times. I hope you play another ten times. Thanks, bro. That means a lot. We do too. <laughs> there you go. We and, do too. Thank you, man. Hey, and thank you for being on the Adventures of Pipe Man. Thanks, Pipe Man. You're the man, the pipe man. 
Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio.